Hello. Um, so today I'm going to talk about kinetics of rigid body. So up to now, we have talked about kinematics of rigid body as our last chapter. So for kinematics of rigid body, just like we talked about kinematics before, we talked about velocity and acceleration, then we attached a body, a frame to our um, rigid body, and then we described the velocity of the body for any an arbitrary point in this rigid body with respect to our body attached frame, and then we described the whole motion with respect to an inertial frame. So for kinetics of rigid body, rigid bodies, So, uh, to understand the kinetics of rigid bodies, what you need to do is you need to go back to your notes and go through the kinetics of system of particles. Because this is where the starting point, where we start and then we, study, we, we, we essentially expand those relationships and we modify those relationships and describe the kinetics of rigid bodies. For a system of particles again for a system of particles we said that f the sum of ex uh, net uh, external forces was equal to m r double dot g so if you go back to your notes so uh, r double dot g was the acceleration of the center of mass for a system of particles and this was the equation the translational equation of motion and then we had the rotational equation of motion for a system of particles. We said that sigma m, the moment, the sum of moments about center of mass was equal to h, the rate at which the angular momentum about the center of mass changes, h dot. And then if you, just to remind you, h h the angular momentum for a system of particles was equal to i equals 1 to n i prime m i v i prime right and if you recall v i prime was the velocity vector and let me use um, um, let me use uh, maybe it's yeah, that's fine. So uh, vi prime is the velocity vector for this particle because now we have n particles. For example, we thought we, uh, we 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 discussed the for example the billiard balls on a table, and we talked about the motion of um, the center of mass, the translational motion of the center of mass for those set of balls and also the angular momentum about the center of mass. We said that the center of mass for a system of particles is not necessarily a physical point. We compute the center of mass using the equation we have to compute the center of mass, and then we study the motion of the center of mass. Now, if you look at this relationship, and then if you look at this relationship, what I want to do now, my goal is to somehow modify these relationships such that they would describe the kinetics of rigid body, right? So this was our goal. So we start with this. So think about this. This is the sum over our particles. So now if you think about your, uh, uh, if you think about your rigid body, if you think of your rigid body as a system of particles, small particles, it is as if you replace this mi with dm, right? So if you, because now we want to talk about a rigid body, so for a rigid body, So for a rigid body, mi becomes dm. And if it's easier for you to understand this, you can think about this mi as delta mi, a small mass. But now think about dividing your rigid body into, um, into um, infinite number of a small mass or large number of a small masses. So 
from basic math and calculus, you know that. Now, MI, because DM. DM describes that small particle in your rigid body. Now, for this small particle in our rigid body, we have VI prime, right? In general, we said that VI prime, the velo again, to remind you, VI prime was the velocity with respect to that frame attached to the body. Right? So in our secondary frame, so VI prime was RI prime. So prime, I'm using the prime sign to indicate that my variable, my parameter is measured in my secondary frame. So RI prime dot... All right, so because we are talking about velocity was equal to R I prime circle plus omega cross R I prime. And we said that we have already talked about this in our latest lesson, uh, just before the example of rigid body. We said that R I prime circle describes the time rate of change of this position vector in this body attached frame. Now, for a rigid body, if I have a body attached frame, the origin of that frame is also in the body, in a rigid body. And by definition, the distance of any, any, uh, any pair of points in a rigid body would not change. Therefore, this R I prime circle goes to zero for a rigid body. I have already talked about this. This is just a reminder. All right, so this is equal to zero for a rigid body. Rigid body. Right. So we end up only having omega cross Ri. So we know that for a rigid body, we have to replace Mi with dm because we have decomposed our rigid body into this large number of small masses. Each one is equal to dm, right? And then, or I think about this sigma. If n becomes large, what does the sigma turn into? From basic calculus, you know that this is the sigma turns into an integral, right? Integral is just like a sum, except the number of summation goes up, right? So sigma mi. I equals 1 to N becomes integral over M. Right? The integral is got to be performed over M. And M is the mass of rigid body. So we have divided our rigid body into these small masses, dm. And then we have this frame, secondary frame, attached to this rigid body. Right? And then for this mass, a small mass, we integrate over the whole mass about this point to compute the angular momentum. And I have to correct this figure just so because we are computing all the variables about the center of mass. So I have divided my rigid body into these small masses and then I'm computing the angle of momentum with respect to center of mass for this rigid body. So, now with this simplification, uh, with this simplification, what do I get? I get, I get H, G, with respect to G, the angle of momentum with respect to center of mass being equal to, we have replaced the sigma with integral, R, I prime, cross all right so we just talked about vi prime we said this term goes to zero we only end up having omega cross ri prime so i'm going to replace this vi prime with omega cross ri prime and we also replaced mi with dm right? so this is a cross product but mi is mass is a scalar number you can move this mi scalar factor 
around. So I'm going to take this here so that it would be easier. All right, so we have these pro so we have these vectors on a prime cross omega cross on our prime. Now note that where the curly bracket is, which we've just talked about this before, that it matters that omega is crossed with ri prime and the, the result is crossed ri prime. So this is a cross product. We cannot move omega outside and move ri prime inside this curly bracket. That goes to zero. All right? This is how it should be. For a rigid body, omega is the same for all the body. Omega is 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 constant for the whole body. What does it mean? All right? It means that if I choose another mass here, this dm, we have same angular velocity vector. By constant, we meant we mean constant throughout the body not constant with respect to time constant with respect to position so for this dm and this dm we have same angular velocity vector all right so what do you see here if you think about this i have um if you think about these parameters that we have here just think about it for a moment r i prime is is changing as we go around this body right for each dm we have a respective ri prime right and we have already talked about describing cross products in matrix form you recall that so if you describe your cross product in matrix form and then separate omega from the rest of your parameters you can describe h g in this form so i'm going to use capital i and cross omega so this is uh this is just a simple matrix multiplication right so I, um, and I have to use, um, or in, in small simplified form, I can also replace, I can also say that HG is equal to IG omega. And if I do it this way, this IG is the inertia matrix with respect to uh, the center of mass. All right, so we describe this cross product in matrix form, we manage why we're doing this, because we say, all right, so M and Ri prime depends on our body, but omega is a, is, is a feature of the motion. So that's why we're interested in doing that. Because then we can judge uh, uh, F, for example, for same angular velocity, how would the inertia matrix uh, affect our angular motion, right? So this is why we're doing this. So if you expand this term IG, so again, to remind you, what you can do is this. So if you go back to your basic uh, math or um, calculus, you can describe this cross product. If you're interested, you can start with this point, ri prime cross omega cross ri prime can be described in this form. So this is a ma identity, math identity we're using. Ri prime dot dot product Ri dot minus 
R I prime R I prime transpose omega. So if you look at your math, uh, you can see that we have this identity. In other words, this is equal to Ri prime. I'm going to also describe this dot product in matrix or vectorial form, which becomes Ri transpose, Ri prime. Again, so the dot product, for example, Ri is a three by one vector, right? So when we say dot product of the vector by itself, it means that you square each of its component, all right? So now think about it this way. If I have a three by one vector, it becomes, the transpose becomes a one by three vector, right? So let me just put the numbers here. This is one by three, and this is three by one, all right? So, and you simply perform this matrix multiplication and you get, again, the square of each component. Right? Minus Ri prime, Ri prime transpose. This is only if you're interested in, in the proof. Right? So, this is where you would start and then you would replace this, the whole term, with this term. And you can already guess what happens, right? Because now, if you do that, you can expand this bracket, and for each term, you can factor out omega, and you're going to end up having an equation just like this. Uh, just to give you the final form, Ig, the inertia matrix, looks like this. Um... Uh, looks like this so let me just think about it which form because um, let me see I'm gonna use this form the inertia matrix is gonna be um, y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz and then I have minus xy, x squared plus z squared, and then minus yz. And then minus xy, sorry, minus xz, minus yz, and then y squared plus z squared. And the whole thing is integrated over volume. So what happens here is that if you think about this, we just said that if you perform this dot product, the dot product gives you the square uh, of each component, all right? And then once you perform all this uh, operation in the bracket and then multiply that by dm, again, dm is density multiplying dv, right? If you replace dm with rho dv and perform this operation in bracket, you can separate that from omega and compute i to be equal to this matrix. Now, note that this is for a three-dimensional motion. So, if you have a planar motion, what happens is that at the end, we are going to be only interested in one of these components. Reason is should be obvious because if we have a planar motion, we are only rotating about one axis. And if only we are only real rotating about one axis, then we are only interested in inertia component about that axis, right? So this is for today. This is already um, a significant amount of material. So the, this part, you've got to understand it because, and it starts from system of particles, and then we simplify and modify that for a rigid body. This part, if you are interested in the proof, 
you can start with this cross product expansion and then expand these terms in the bracket and then uh, perform all the math operation and manipulate this equation so that you can show that the inertial matrix simplifies to this equation. All right, talk to you later.